Hey all, this is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023. I uh, just wanted to do a little update. Spent some time in the fish room today. It's a lovely Saturday here in Palm Desert, California. So let's uh, let's turn this around and we'll, I'll show you what I did. All right, here's the mess. One of these days I'll clean it all up. I had some serious algae problems in a couple tanks, this being one of them. So I took all the rocks out and uh, filled these buckets with water and a little bit of bleach uh, let them sit for a couple days and then scrub them with one of those little, you know, wood knuckle brushes. Um, and, and it's better. So it's a lot better. And I just did water changes on all the tanks here in the garage. This is one with a crebensis. And there's also some little uh, green quarries in there. And this is a cool tank. I like this tank a lot. Um, I like these guys. They're hungry. They know it. So, yeah, anyway. And then um, a little five-gallon I got to empty. I had a couple little... Uh, you know, I don't even know anymore if they were platies or sword tails or sword tail platies or whatever. They're neon orange sword tails. And then my little uh, bed of tank with the uh, uh, yeah, about 30 of them in here. They are so cool and they're getting big. And then a bunch of uh, about 30 little uh, bronze quarries. And there were 13 a mono shrimp. I only see a couple at a time once in a while. And I found two of them in uh, the guppy tank on the other side of this. So they crawled out overnight and went across the pothos into that tank. That's all I got. Um, so just just because I'm a big fan. Of, there's a couple a couple friends in Australia that I love watching their channels. Uh, Adrian's Fish Room, always. And, and before that, what got me started on the Australian channels was Keeping Fish Simple. Uh, Nick at Keeping Fish Simple. I've learned a lot uh, watching his his videos about raising fish, fish keeping, all that. Anyway, so one led to another. Nick toured Adrian's fish room a couple times, uh, and then uh, and he also toured uh, another guy, Tony, and there was a couple other guys. I've seen all Nick's videos, um, and they're they're always just fun and and educational, inspirational. Well, anyway, he also toward this uh, woman's fish room, Eliza, and I can't remember the name of her channel uh, or her shop. She sells online in Australia. Uh, and she was uh, showing off these breeding trays or fry trays that she uses. And then uh, a couple days ago, I was watching Katie Cichlids, uh, also another uh, young lady from Australia. And she was at a fish auction and Eliza was there showing off these uh, fry trays. Uh, she bought the rights from its uh, Lowell's, oh gosh, I, sh I meant to look before, Lowell's Fish Lab, I think is what it's called. And, and Lowell makes these uh, 3D printed trays. Well, you know, after seeing it a couple times, I thought, well, geez, I, I got to give this a shot. And, and so I just set it all up. I just got it in the mail a few days ago. Uh, he has an Etsy page. It's called Make More Fish. Um, if you go to Lowell's Fish Lab, uh, on YouTube and uh, on the about page, there's a link that'll take you right to it. And he's got two sizes of these things. Uh, and so far, I think I love it. Uh, it came with a whole set of instructions uh, printed out really nicely um, and a little how not to destroy the trays, which is nice because um, they are 3D printed. So I guess it's a little different than a lot of injection molded plastics or whatever. But anyway, uh, at the last page, I thought was really cool. Step 11, make fish. Fish go here. You can't beat that. So anyway, I, I don't know the guy, I've never met him. Obviously he's got a sense of humor and he does 3D printing. So he will sell you, I guess he'll sell you or maybe even give you the, the pattern as long as it's not for sale uh, to make your own uh, uh, fry trays. And you know what? I just bought one, and, and if I ever need more, I will just buy more from the guy. So I gotta say, this thing came really well packed as well. It was wrapped in like a, a you know, small bubble wrap, and uh, everything, uh, all the little parts were in the tray itself. Um, and there's a little Ziploc bag holding these little clips that were part of it. So the only thing you need to come up with is uh, airline and, and you know a couple of valves. 
So what I did too, because I've got both these running off of one valve, or yeah, one main valve. Um, I split this airline with a little Y and uh, put two valves on it. And one of the lines goes into the air tube and the other line goes down and around to the uplift. It's kind of cool. It's really kind of cool. So it's, <laughs> that's what's got. I was wondering where all the bubbles coming from. They're coming from baby group. Keeps coming up around the corner. I guess that's all right. It's not gonna hurt anything. I don't know if we can see them or not, but there are, uh, while I was doing the water change, I found another batch of Cory eggs in the 75 gallon tank. So they're in here. Um, we'll see if they, they do all right. Hey, Bob. Bob. Every time I see, we've got road runners in the neighborhood. And every time I see her, all road runners are named Bob. So Bob or Barbara, one of the two. So those are the eggs right there. This is kind of cool. This is that, uh, uh, there's the pickup here. It's got a sponge filter on it. So you, we don't suck up other fish. And a um, piece of aquarium tubing that comes up and around. And that's the airline. Um, and there's a valve on this here. And under this little cap right here, it's always kind of perplexed how these work, but air comes in here and goes up. And as it goes up, it draws water with it. All right. And then also another little line for a little, uh, little bubbler that goes in there. Let me put that cap back on. This thing's really well thought out is also, um, there's a little clip here. These rails, there's one in the a set of rails in the front and a set in the back and they're adjustable. Um, and this little clip goes over the rail, kind of locks it in place so it won't, you know, slide. And uh, this rail has the, the hole for the air tube. And then there's just a flat lock over on this side here. And they are, I'm gonna show you over here, they are actually right and left. So there's an extra, extra pickup piece. And it would go, no, oh, here we go. There's the extra pickup piece, right? And this threads up into the bottom of the fry box. Um, this goes into a, a sponge filter, a pre-filter, all right? The air tube get, just gets shoved into there and, and this gets screwed into the bottom of the fry box. So screw it into the bottom of the fry, fry box first, then shove the air thing in, that works. Um, and there's extra pieces. Um, this is an extra uh, clip for the air tube. And also it stops, you know, the, the uh, uh, those rails from sliding. And there's both right and left on those and enough for front and back. I've got it all pushed forward, so I only needed the clips in the back. So really, really well thought out. And, and you know, after I saw that, I, I figured, yeah, I just gotta have one of those, so I did. Uh, anyway, back to this. Uh, so I had a blackbird algae in this tank, so I took a lot of it apart, and I'm still fighting little bits of it. There's some uh, right there. And I, I, I kinda use a little, little tiny gravel back, and there's some on that chunk of wood. Um, and all the fish are happy. You guys got to see this. Let me, uh, it's feeding time anyway. So I've got these algae wafers that I bought on Amazon, I don't know, a while back. Um, and these guys absolutely love it. So I'm gonna drop a couple in and then let them find them and then we'll come back to them. So there, so these algae wafers. And down they go and look at them, dive, dive. So anyway. Um, so we'll come back. They'll be, they'll be swarming over this. So then, uh, uh, five gallon tank down or five gallon. Yeah. Right. Been a long day. Uh, 20 gallon. And this is just cherry shrimp and a lot of plants. And then, uh, another 20 gallon. And this is just, uh, orange sunkissed shrimp and a lot of plants and some, a uh, couple of, uh, autosynclus hiding around in there somewhere. And then this tank is... Uh, blue dream neocaridina, blue dream shrimp, 
uh, six, I think it's six, uh, pandacories and two placostomus and a lot of plants. And then this tank is, there's a little clear neocaridina, I guess they're kind of like wild type. And there's some uh, wild type mollies that a friend caught in the Colorado River. Uh, and then there's crypts in pots. It's kind of a, um, you know, kind of a nursery tank that it's been a farm tank. And then these tanks all seem to have red root floater on top, a lot of guppy grass. Um, and then this other tank here, it's, uh, it's just holding a lot of plants right now. And it's not only holding a lot of plants, my wife spotted them the other day, now I'm not seeing them, I don't know if they just finally died off or what. These red red worms, and kind of think they're uh, uh, like mayfly larvae, we'll see. So around this side then, uh, the little albino crebensis. Um, and they're coming along, and I forgot to fill this tank. Jeez, I did that before. Fortunately, the hose is still set up. So when we're done here, I will fill this tank. And then this tank, this was fun. This is full of guppies. Um, started out with, I don't know, five or six, and there's like 50 or 60 now. I guess guppies do that. Um, but this, I really like the way this tank came out. I put rocks in here like half a dozen times, never liked it. And then I just sort of fell on this and stuffed a bunch of java fern uh, between the wedges or the lead, you know, whatever, the wedges of these uh, rocks and a couple of uh, uh, um, echinodorus, uh, uh, Amazon sword types, a couple of those and some of this hydrocotyl and some Sagittaria, subulata, the dwarf sag. Um, and it's just, I, I love the look of this tank. It's kind of sparse and red root floater. And some of that red root floaters on the top because I literally overflowed this tank. I was doing, you know, uh, I think the phrase is multi-half-assing. Um, doing about three things at once. You never do anything well when you do that. Um, but anyway, and then this one, the 75. Uh, th this has really, I think, just come along nicely. It's been set up for a couple months now. And really all that's in here are uh, uh, six uh, bronze quarries and two little uh, koi angels and a lot of plants. And I got a bunch of cribs. There's there's uh, some of these uh, Amazon swords, different variety, and I don't have the top, off the top of the head. And maybe I'll put it in print when I when I sit down and put this video together. Uh, a couple of these little, uh, I, I think they're lotus, red lotus. Uh, and then there's two little uh, koi angels. There goes one hiding around the back a and here come you know the fleet of uh, little bronze quarries and there were they, they've spawned in this tank since day one and uh, I had little quarry fry up here on this rock ledge uh, and there's a little angel tucked away back there right now and uh, one of the two and I haven't seen any for a while, so I don't know if they just didn't make it or what, but uh, they were free swimming. They, I'd seen them, you know, cruising around on these rock ledges, uh, and they may be in there hiding, who knows? And there's also a couple little clown plecos in here, and I haven't seen them. I knew I wouldn't see those very much. Occasionally I saw them early on, and now I'm not seeing them at all. Uh, maybe I need to come out here at night. And a lot of plants. I love that thing, that was a bulb. I bought this pack of bulbs from uh, PetSmart, and that was one of them. And that is absolutely a gorgeous plant, I think. Um, the, the lotus or lilies or whatever they are came from a, a vendor in Texas, uh, Marcus Fish Tanks, and they are beautiful. Um, so it's, uh, it's always a, a fun view, I think, the end of looking down the length of the tank like that. That rock ledge really came out well. And go back and check out my video on how I set this tank up, one of the earlier videos on this tank. And we'll come back across here. And here's one of those other uh, lotus bulbs that's doing really well. Same vendor, he, I bought three of them. Um, and then I've got this little tank. All the plants that were suffering from black beard algae uh, are in this tank. 
uh, and I've dosed it with hydrogen peroxide, I don't know, three or four times now, and they're mostly cleaned up, so I gotta take this apart, wash them all off, clean them up, and I can replant them now. Um, this is uh, Artemia, brine shrimp, kind of fun. There's a few in there. And then my 40 breeders, uh, this is one of them. A couple big plecos in here. And there are uh, uh, false Julie Cory in here. There are uh, six, I believe. Uh, it's one of the adults there. Oh, you know what? There might be, uh, I take that back. There might be 10 in here. There were four juveniles that showed up in that farm tank with those little potted crypts. And, and the only thing I can figure is they came across with some of this hornwort when I transferred some of the hornwort in there earlier on. So, and there's uh, some Mickey Mouse platies and there's Carol and Bob. And they've spawned a few times and that's where the, the uh, little uh, juvenile crevences come from. There's one of the little uh, juvenile quarries right now from that I transferred back from that farm tank. And some uh, ember tetras and they are really spectacular little fish. And here's an interesting thing. This is, uh, oh God, I think it's called salt cedar or, uh, yeah, I don't even remember now. It's uh, uh, a tree that grows all along the railroad tracks here in Coachella Valley. These are for a windbreak. Uh, it's a really soft wood. And uh, I claim these filters. I've got these hang on backs. These, uh, what are they, Aquion or AquaClear, I'm sorry, hang on backs, and I'm cleaning them every couple of days. And I think it's the, the Plecos feeding on them, and I don't know if it's pooping them out or just breaking up the wood, but that really makes it tough to keep up. This is like 24 hours later. I was talking about how, how fast these filters get impacted. There's the next one. And the one in the back still holding up all right. And I've got a pre-filter on all of these. That helps with the larger particles, but it does nothing for the, the fine muck that comes through. And then if I don't pay attention, the, the filter floss, and I'm trying different things, just starts pushing its way up. And I've had the filters overflow before too. And yeah, I've really got a mess out here. I apologize. No, I don't apologize for that because that implies it's never, it's never messy. It's always messy. But anyway, in this tank, these are all those uh, uh, neon orange sword tails. And there's some cool males in there now. Uh, I started with six of the big ones. I lost one fairly recently, so I've had them about a year. And then these are all the fry off of the six. That one with the liar tail is the original male. And then the, there were five big females. I haven't had any since I moved them back in here. They were in the tank. I'm going to turn. Take your Dramamine if you need to. They were in this tank. And then this tank, oh, by the way, here we go. Uh, these are the insanity that is juvenile uh, bettas and juvenile quarries. Look at this. They love this stuff. But anyway, I had uh, these guys in a 20 gallon in my office when they were fry, uh, or eggs hatching actually. Uh, and I kept them in there for, for several months and then I finally moved them out here. And when I did, um, I think there's one of the Amano shrimp. Anyway, when I did move them out here, I moved the, these uh, sword tail platies, uh, whatever, sword tails, and, uh, into this tank, back into this tank. And there are some auto sinkless in here Here's one. And then there are these sailfin quarries. There's five of them in here. And a bunch of uh, red cherry shrimp. And there's also a bunch of red cherry shrimp in this other 40 breeder. They hide really well. So, so anyway, that's kind of a, a weekend update. I haven't done one of these in a while and they're always fun. And uh, so there's, you can see, a, here's a big Amazon sword. Um, and the inflorescence shoot that comes up. So they'll actually flower out of water, uh, but these plantlets that come along, and there's 
you can see the leaf of one. I took, I, I brought the stem down underwater. They tend to dry out, sticking out. We're in a really arid environment here. So I just shoved it under the, you know, under the water and it's kind of pinned under this little piece of driftwood right there. And I did one coming off of, off of this one pinned under this. So that keeps the, the, the little uh, plantlets wet and uh, they, they grow, they develop, and eventually I'll cut these free and put them in other tanks. Um, so then in the back here, I got a mother-in-law's tongue, snake plant, whatever you want to call it. And this kind of papyrusy like weed that I thought, I, it's not doing real well. And what else? Uh, philodendron and pink polka dot plant. And uh, that's uh, uh, anthurium. It was doing really well. And I don't remember, I don't I don't know what happened to it, but the fact that it's still alive, I'm really grateful. And some more of the Sansevieria. And you can see this does really well in the uh, immerse like this. You know, it started out just a leaf and it shot out, you know, new plantlets through the little holes. These are just re recycled uh, plant pots, uh, you know, aquarium plant pots. And I got to clean some dead leaves out of there. And so anyway, and got a pothos coming up the back here. The post of those are nice. They're they're doing all right. They're not doing as good as some I've seen. Every time I watch Adrian's fish room, I'm just his pothos is taking over his garage and it just blows me away. And he has to prune it. <laughs> Quality problem. And he has buckets full of this stuff. Well, maybe someday, someday I'll, I'll end up with. But you know they got a lot of roots in the water, and that helps pull uh, nitrates out of the water. Um, so you know it's a good thing. You know, as always, thanks so much for watching. You know, and I love your comments. Um, and please keep those coming. Any kind of feedback is all good. These are a bunch of the little crypts that came out of those pots in that little farm tank. And I got some, I think it's jungle valve in the back. And it took a long time to get established. And it's doing it now. Um, the java fern. I love java fern. They're just dead easy to grow. But anyway, uh... Do me a favor, if you haven't already, like and uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. Um, I'm trying to grow this channel. There's some links. Uh, trying to build a Shopify store uh, to get uh, to help support the channel and, and the aquarium addiction. This is one of our new things in the store. It's these beta wall clocks. Really pretty. Come in six different styles, both with black or white hands and also in wood, black, or white frames. Hope you take a look. This is, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure many of you have MTS, uh, and I wouldn't say suffer from it, but it is <laughs> multiple tank syndrome. That's what, that's what this is. And, uh, you know, at some point I would like more multiple tanks. And I've got some other videos planned on these, uh, just these foam, foam filter hacks and uh, plant stuff and, um, anyway, uh, getting rid of algae on, on plants. I, I had a, got a great Instagram following. I'm there too, Garage Aquatics 2023. And Facebook, same, Garage Aquatics 2023. And I get some great feedback on, on the Instagram. Um, and uh, so I'm going to do a video based on some recent feedback about algae control. But anyway, you all take it easy. Uh, enjoy uh, the day the night whatever time you see this just have a great great week and i'll catch you on the rebound thank you all oh and and uh thanks for watching <laughs>